In this video, we're going to discuss another project which is around building a honeypot. And if you're not familiar with what one is, well, in cybersecurity, it's like a tricked out decoy system that sets up to bait and catch hackers. It's a sneaky way to study their moves, find out what they're up to, and basically learn their playbook. Think of it like a trap designed to look so tempting that hackers just can't resist getting stuck in it. And to do all of this, we'll be using Kauri. Now, Kauri is a popular open source honeypot that emulates a vulnerable SSH and Telnet service to attract and interact with malicious attackers. So basically, once attackers are in, they believe they are in control of a real machine, but they're actually interacting with Kauri. And the best part is, is that it records everything that the attacker does, including the commands that they run, the files they try to download, and even their keystrokes. So you're actually playing them at their own game. Now, Kauri is widely used by security researchers, educational institutions, and even threat intelligence analysts to study attacker behavior. So it's not something small, it's well known across the industry. Everything will be linked down in the description below. So let's talk about the steps to building this honeypot. Well, step number one, we'll be looking at dependencies. So before installing Kauri, you need to make sure the server that you're using has the necessary dependencies as there are libraries and tools that Kauri relies on to function properly. So you need to make sure these are in place. Head to the GitHub linked down below to clone Kauri's source code from GitHub. This will essentially pull all the Kauri code base into your server so that you have everything you need to get ready and set up the honeypot. After this, you'll move on to step three, which is setting up the virtual environment. A virtual environment isolates Kauri's dependencies and Python packages from the rest of your system. And this helps keep your system clean and ensures compatibility. So three vital and fundamental steps to this entire process that you need to make sure you get correct. If you have any questions or you're stuck, head to our Discord where you can ask about this project in detail. After this, you'll want to start to modify the configuration. So Kauri comes with a default config file that you'll need to modify slightly to suit your needs. So you'll want to copy that default configuration into a new file called kauri.config. You'll edit this to configure the honeypot. The nano command will then open the file in the terminal editor for modification. Inside this file, you can customize the settings for your honeypot, such as which port Kauri will listen on. So by default, as an example, Kauri listens on port 2222 for SSH connections. You can change this to any other port, but it's recommended to keep your real SSH access separate. And since you're running the honeypot that stimulates SSH, you need to keep your own legitimate SSH connection secure. So what I recommend that you do is you change the default SSH port for your own access, which is commonly port 22, to something else to avoid conflict with the honeypot and to prevent attackers from brute forcing attacks on your real SSH connection. Your honeypot should stimulate an attack target, but you don't want the attackers to actually gain access and exploit the real underlying server, which is the host machine you're working on. You'll have the possibility of adding fake file contents so the attacker can cut files such as password. This is all things you can do once you're familiar with this setup. After this, you'll then be ready to start Kauri. So this is where you'll want to start it and check that it's running. And once Kauri is running, you can immediately start to observe attackers activities by checking the log files. So we now move on to step number six. And this is where you can run a command to view incoming activity in real time. You'll be able to see login attempts and the commands attackers are trying to execute and other important data. So now you'll want to start to monitor the honeypot at different times of the day. And monitoring it helps you understand how attackers operate, including the tools, techniques and procedures they use. So you'll want to now start to go through the logs to see if you can see the steps that the attackers are taking and what you're seeing in the logs. This also helps in two different ways. You're learning how to configure and use a honeypot and you're also looking at how to read logs. This can inform your overall cybersecurity strategy or whatever you're trying to achieve, whether it's just learning. You can observe things from login attempts to commands that they are running and the files that they're attempting to download or exfiltrate. 
all useful things when you're looking to take on a project or include something in your resume. If you're interested in projects like this or you want to see more projects, I will link one in the banner above and I regularly make videos like this on my channel so let me know what other types of projects you would like to use. And if you've really enjoyed this one you can take this project actually even further and integrate it with security tools like ELK Stack for visualization and analysis where you can start to dive into those logs into more detail and actually visualize that data. So if you're interested in seeing that as well do let me know. If you've enjoyed the video please do leave a like down below and also comment what you've enjoyed about the video as it massively helps the channel out.